All right, Metal Maniacs, it's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled beside myself. As the English would say, I am chuffed. Um, I am chatting with the one and only uh, Mr. Mark Sutcliffe, of course, legendary uh, musician, guitar player, uh, vocalist, and uh, purveyor of uh, New Wave of British Heavy Metal band, trespass one of my favorite bands so so happy to be chatting with you today mark how are you doing i'm doing good thank you good evening from here anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. no, i'm doing good I'm doing good uh, glastonbury is on the tv at the moment uh, at high volume i can hear it downstairs <laughs> um i think guns and roses are on later so one of my partner's favorite bands so she'll be turning up the volume oh nice right on very good <laughs> very good um so First off, uh, and maybe most importantly, I need to congratulate you on the release of a uh, brand new album, Wolf at the Door, uh, which came out uh, a little over three weeks ago, I think May 26th, at least here yeah. in the States. Um, yeah. And what a phenomenal, in fact, I've got a copy right here. Uh, yeah. What a phenomenal album. Um, and, and in all sincerity, um definitely one of my top albums of 2023 um i uh, adore this album so um congratulations on the album uh release uh, very exciting news thanks victor i really appreciate that and yeah it's uh it's it came to get i mean i, I did write we had a bit of a, a sort of a longer gap between uh footprints in the rock which which our first release on that label and and Wolf at the Door, because obviously of COVID and things like that, and a lot of different, lots of things happened to me in that time. Mm. But I was able to put together, I, I think I had about 25 songs that I could pick from to go onto the album. And um, and, and that, that, that did, it took a while to, to sort of hone it down to the tracks we, we actually wanted to use. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've, I, I did try and, as I said to somebody recently, you know, it, it's a weird thing when you've got almost total control over what your music is. Right. And you still keep it relatively conservative. I mean, I, 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 I feel like I pushed the boundaries a little more maybe than before mm. and tried to branch out into a more melodic areas and a, and a, a slightly more, you know, trying to think of the right word but i, I want to say opus but it sounds too much <laughs> yeah you, know, you know make a bit more of it because the thing is at the end of the day when, i suppose i was looking at this album a little bit like the, the classic albums that i loved from the 70s where you had a bit of diversity going on yeah i mean all sort of bands all rock bands went through that period when like like almost every song had to be a single you know or something along those lines and there there wasn't the room to experiment a little bit and do slightly different things so wolf at the door I, I was able to do that a bit more maybe show some more of my influences yeah it, it, it was good it was a, it was a good process i enjoyed it nice yeah and i i think you know as you said yeah it seems like yeah it's very diverse um from track to track but it all it, it's very cohesive at the same time but i um and it's just, yeah, there's there's definitely no filler. Like every song is, like you said, it's, it's like a single. It's um, it's just an excellent album. It's one of those albums that, uh, you know, once the needle lifts on the second side, I flip it right back over and start again because it's 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 it's, it's addictive. Good. It's addictive. It's like crack. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I'm 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 glad. I I must admit, it's it's a funny thing listening to your own music. I mean, you're so close to it, right? And obviously, all you hear is that are any faults that you think are there, but like nobody else probably ever he ever hears them. But I mean, it it's got some really really good reviews. I must admit, in the press, and uh, thank you very much for you know that you're liking it. And uh, I've had some pretty bad ones as well. Hmm, really? Yeah, generally, a couple of couple of guys, the European mags mostly, just didn't get it at all. Oh. They just didn't get it. I guess they're coming at it maybe from a younger perspective. A, a weird thing's happened since we started sort of putting music out in sort of late 79, 80. Uh, uh, 
heavy rock or heavy metal as a genre is split into all these different subgenres. Yeah. And I think people have a clear idea of the template that they think heavy rock or heavy metal is. And if you don't fit that template, you know, when I when I first started playing, you'd have bands as diverse as Free and Bad Company and Journey and 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 Judas Priest and Sabbath and they, they all pretty much came under the same umbrella. Yeah. Even though they were, even so, some of the bands were much more melodic, much more bluesy, much more open, even with a bit of country in there, maybe. So you had a much more diverse thing, that umbrella that everyone fitted under. But now it's it's become much more factionalised. I, 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 I don't mind that. I mean, when Trespass, when we kick off into something fairly heavy, like Crooked Cross or something like that, you know, it's, it, it, but it, it's still, you know, you know, quite lightweight, perhaps compared to some of the bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I I think it's yeah, it's it's a strange beast now. With yeah, with, the, with all these sub genre and sub sub genres now, it seems like even it's <laughs> it's getting a little ridiculous. Where yeah, it, the same thing. When I was a kid growing up, yeah, it was just you know, there was pop music and there was heavy metal, you know, or hard rock, whatever you wanted to call it. But yeah, it was like we didn't compartmentalize everything so much it was you know yeah if you listen to yeah like you said you know free or you know yeah you might listen to judas priest as well or you know scorpions or whatever so yeah it's, yeah. it's a weird it's a weird beast um and it, it's not like you said it's not just like a bad thing um and sometimes it's it's helpful to, you know it can be a, a nice description a nice descriptive if you're trying to explain something to somebody um but yeah i think it gets a little overblown <laughs> and yeah i, I I, I find that bizarre and shocking that anybody would would have an issue with this album at all. I think it's definitely ten out of ten for me. It's 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 Thank a perfect you. it's a perfect album. Yeah, and I, I yeah I definitely don't say that lightly. I think it's um it's just excellent and and I love the I love the fact that it's um you know as you said it's diverse but it uh, it um it harkens back to that you know new wave of british heavy metal sound from the early 80s but then it also is very fresh and relevant to... i hope so yeah, yeah. You no know, one of the victor one of the things that surprised me the most in terms of the reaction to the album was the link back to the 80s hmm. and, I, and i and i've said to everyone who's asked me you know i i absolutely did not do it deliberately <laughs> You know, because you can, you, 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 you can, I mean, like there's a band called uh, Rock Scalibur. They, 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 they do new wave of British heavy metal covers and they, they did a recording of Storm Child actually, oh, which, wow. which, yeah. And they really, really worked hard at making it sound authentic. Oh. And I thought, well, that they're actually working harder to make it sound like the new wave of British heavy metal, much harder than I am because I'm just doing what I do. Yeah, and if it has that sound. It's something to do with, I don't know, the way I approach music, my particular set of influences. What 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 I kind of did with this set of songs was, I literally thought to myself, right, I'm going with my gut instincts, my 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 key influences. So Thin Lizzy, Blackmore, you know, mm. uh, all, all all the people that really inspired me. And I suppose in some ways, I, I won't say I shied away from it, but I didn't bring the influences that, that have come along in that in that gap, Metallica, I, I and think and people like that. I, I I although obviously they're excuse me a second, although they're they're great friends in, as it happens with the guys from Metallica, they you know, they, they, they always support the band as much as they can. Yeah. Um and we get to go to, sorry, I'm just uh, sorting my phone out. That's better. Yeah. Um, just, I, I wanted to sort of um, go back to my roots a, a little bit. Um, I, I, and I, I think I think that's what you can hear, you know, is, is, is a, a tendency for us to go back to where we, we started to an extent influence-wise. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I can I see mean, that. I mean, and it's interesting, you know, when you've been playing for as long as I have, I mean, I I got a guitar, first guitar when I was 16. That's quite a few years now. That was 75. Oh, so it's quite a few years since I got my first guitar. I couldn't play at all. I just, 
and somebody got me into heavy rock almost on my first day in a new job age 16 somebody handed me three albums oh, nice and, and i just thought wow what is this fantastic new music that i've just been given to listen to um and uh and, and it coincided with getting, with getting my first guitar so you nice. know and, and the rest is history kind of thing do you recall what those three albums were i do actually it's a bit of a strange mix but it was um first led zeppelin album led zeppelin nice. one um uh high voltage by acdc excellent what was it no it was I think it was let is it let maybe rock i can't remember it was the, the album with a whole lot of rosie on it and, and and status quo on the level oh okay very cool so an interesting interesting mix of of yeah. of, 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 of sort of and obviously i latched onto quo at a very early age because it was because of the accessibility of the music mm -hmm. and i and i and i did spend a lot of time sort of around those kind of that kind of rhythm feel that quo had they're, they're very much more a heavy rock band back in the 70s and so yeah i picked up on that and then i really got into lizzie and you, you i started to branch out from there my brother paul who was obviously very important uh, as drummer in the band of uh, you know in, back in those days he was very much more into american acts and a bit more prog as well so between the two of us we we spanned quite a range of influences um yeah it was uh, I, I, I was talking to a guy the other day um, a, a, a band called coliseum two oh yeah that had, had had don airy on keyboards and, and gary moore on guitar and john heisman and they were pretty incredible as well so there was that kind that kind of, and we got into rush and the kind of more virtuoso side of things although we, we hadn't been playing that long so we we try we try to emulate it without really having the skill set you know but music i i think is about feel a lot of it how does it make you feel when you listen to it yeah it's not so much about the genre or what kind of music it is if that music moves you then 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 it's it's good music you know yeah i agree i totally agree yeah i have a I mean, you can't see it here. I have a vast record collection and CD collection and tape collection. And uh, yeah, I listen to, I mean, I am a metalhead. Obviously, you can look at me and go, that guy's a metalhead. But um, <laughs> but I also listen to, I listen to everything. I, you know, I mean, I, I adore uh, Ike and Tina Turner. And yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. the Rolling yeah, Stones exactly. and yeah, you know, Jimi Hendrix. And all. yeah, I listen to a lot of different, and even jazz and um, not a lot of jazz, but yeah. Um, I do dig it. Yeah, I I, I love uh, I love that. So did uh, did Paul start playing drums around the same time you you picked up the guitar? Yeah, it was um it was an, it was an interesting time because I, I I guess I've been playing a couple of years from scratch and I and I started to get it, it started to obsess me slightly. It was just something that I'd, I I I suddenly found something to belong to. I was a bit unsure. I, I, I've always been quite artistic, I guess, and used to write poetry and stuff like that at school. Run a couple of prizes for poetry, actually. Oh, cool! And I guess that 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 fed into the fact that as soon as I could play a couple of chords, I started writing my own stuff, which was quite, it always been very important to me. Um, and I. I and I started, started started to play covers. Covers, you know, were very important too. Obviously, to start with, when you first start playing. And my brother used to, a little younger than me, but he, uh, my 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 mum used to go to work in the evenings, leave us in the house. So you know, um, <laughs> we can make. When I think of the noise we must have made, <laughs> uh, uh, the, the poor neighbours, you know. But uh, but he used to like hit on cardboard boxes and stuff like that. And we used to enjoy that. And then my gut, my dad bought him a drum kit at some point. I, I think I'm right in saying when, when we recorded one of these days in October 79, it only actually had a drum kit for 18 months. Oh, wow. I, I, I remember that uh, right from uh, early days when we, 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 we 
we were fiddling around with all. I've got some recordings of it, I and mean, it's it sounds appalling actually. <laughs> I didn't have a microphone, so I just used to stand in the doorway and shout into the kitchen. Oh, wow. where, where there was a tape recorder and it just sounds like Armageddon, you know. <laughs> but in the end, I think my the neighbours sort of fell out with my mum and dad over it, so we moved somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i mean it, we, we went through various different things my cousin played rick played bass for a while and then we met up with some other guy from another band and the two bands kind of merged mm. and uh that, and that, that, that was sort of the pre-trespass thing okay we, and uh and then and then we started to, to gig locally with uh we, we got a, a bass guy on bass guitar who was a little older than us he played on the one of these days the original recordings oh okay and so and he really helped us his name was richard penny and um we started to, to do gigs in the sort of local pubs but even then we were doing our own stuff alongside the covers the lizzie covers the skinnered ufo and all that stuff so, uh, 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 you know, that, that, that kind of, we cut our teeth doing that. And it was, it was, I knew early on, perhaps that maybe we were onto something because people would say, well, who was that song by you did? Most people who heard like one of these days and light Smith and stuff like that for the first time assumed they were covers, mm, which wow. was quite, quite flattering in a way, but actually yeah. that it was other than stuff because I, I think that I, I don't know if you've ever found this with bands that are just starting to bring their own material into the set. Often it's a complete, it goes off on a complete tangent from the covers they've been doing. Right. I don't know if it's just, just, a, just for a phenomenon that I notice, but in an effort to be different, they, they often go off on some sort of tangent rather than listening to the covers they've been doing and think, right, well, what, what, what kind of stuff do I like? What 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 am I trying to be here? I, not and I and I guess where I took all those influences and put them together, and you ended up with something like one of these days, you know, which is a, a, a hybrid of Thin Lizzy and UFO and you know all the things that I loved. Nice. And uh, I guess we don't. That's that's how we developed our our, our playing and our writing interesting that that's cool so that would have been like what about 77 78 around there um probably yeah 78 79 probably okay um and uh so we we started to sort of play and through, through 79 we were doing quite a few local shows and uh and developing the songs as we went and and then people started to come and see us for that for our own material which was wonderful I mean, we were we, we were playing one of these days and stuff like that alongside Freebird, <laughs> mm. and, and 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 you know, it's it's a it's just I would I would it says this sounds like a silly thing to say, but I would like to have seen us back then. It must have been quite an interesting band with all these because we, we did some pretty cool covers, you know, um, uh, uh, stuff like Bad Reputation by Thin Lizzy, and you know, some some pretty cool stuff. Because Paul was such a good drummer, yeah, we could do that. We could do the Lizzie stuff because Brian Downey from Lizzie, he's one of the greatest drummers I, oh, I, yeah. ever in that genre, and and we could do stuff like Emerald and and Warriors and stuff like that off the Jailbreak album. So we'd have those in the set, and then and we'd have a bit of Skinnered, like I said, and you know, and and uh, Bad Company and all sorts, and then you'd have one of these days and Light Smith and. You know, <laughs> nice. they were good times. And then someone came along and said, you should record this stuff. And of course, we went in the studio to do uh, a demo and we recorded one of these days and Bloody Moon, the B-side and a few other songs. And uh, and the rest is history kind of thing. Yeah, the, the, the Through Ages demo, that was what, eight, 1980, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a, a, a 
an interesting time. We we hadn't really set on a, a firm direction to go in as a band. We were still experimenting. Hmm. I think that, and I think the new wave of British heavy metal and everything that happened kind of galvanized us a little bit more in the slightly heavier direction. Okay. Um, it's taken me a long time to return back to that diversity, you know, because as we were saying before, bands can start to belong to their fans, and I suppose they do in a way. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I guess if a particular genre or f f if feel, you know, turns people on, then you 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 sort of, I mean, how many bands have been criticised for for trying something new? I mean. You know, Metallica, for instance, the Black Album was, a lot of people thought, well, what is this, you know? Yeah. You yeah. could see why Metallica had done the album that way and started to, to diversify a little bit. But that's not necessarily what their fans wanted. Yeah. You know, it's one of those weird things. You you you, you know, bands can get trapped in it, if they, you know, and not really be able to express themselves. So, um, I mean, now... And I mean, that showed itself, as I said to you before, in the reviews we got. Some people just didn't like anything new that we did. And there's still a problem for bands that have been around as long as Trespass have. You know, when we do a show, people want to hear the old stuff, which is understandable. And I have venues say to me, will you play a 1980s set? And I thought to myself, yes but you're going to get a couple of songs off Wolf at the Door as well, because, yeah. you know, you want Trespass, you're going to get that as well. So Yeah, yeah you, that's what the know. band is. Yeah, exactly. You know, but actually, because the album has been pretty well received, and uh, I guess there's a bit more interest in it, especially in in Europe, actually, in Germany, uh, you know, we, we, that gives us a chance to play a set with a nice mix of stuff across the... I mean, I think about bands, one of my favourite bands has always been Deep Purple. Mm, I mean, yeah. how do you pick a set? <laughs> yeah. How do yeah. you pick a set when you've got that kind of, that, that, that incredible panoply of of music to play, you know? Uh, and, and I guess a lot of bands, and again, when you're putting an album together, you look at the album and you go, we will never play that live. Mm. This song is, I won't call it filler, but you have got an opportunity to play something different, maybe do something a little different. You know, you're never going to play it. Although you think, you know, you're not, but it ends up being the favorite song on the album of people, you know, right. the one that you thought it was just a throwaway song, you know, um, but uh, not that I approached anything on Wolf at the door quite in that way. I tried a couple of different things. I mean, um, I suppose one of the ones on there that's, it's actually my part. My partner Carol. It's her favourite song. Is um, is uh, the Titanic one, you know, unsinkable. Oh, yeah. Which is a it, 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 I, it was a song. I, I read the story of the guys who were the orchestra on the Titanic and what happened to them, and they all they all sadly lost their lives. That they played right to the end when they couldn't play anymore, and the ship was starting to list, and they they they, they you know I mean what bravery. They tried to calm people, you know, by by keeping the music going right to the end. I mean, what can you say about that, you know? Yeah. And, of course, the Titanic's been in the news again. It's claimed more lives, you know? Right, yeah. So, so you know, it, it was a, it, that was a song on a different subject level. And I, one of the things that I like to do is I tend to write the lyrics first. Oh, interesting. And... I mean, I mean, I mean, I know I'm I'm not alone in in working that way, but a lot of guys, a lot of bands are riff based, or they'll they'll come up with a riff or something like that. I I have a tendency to write the, write the lyric first, and and of course then, if it's a a, a, a darkish subject or a, a subject with a bit of poignancy, I, I'll look to the music to then, you know, set within that kind of idea and so when i was doing the when i was coming up with the the, the, the riffs for, for for unsinkable i wanted it to you know it, it had a it has a certain feel to it yeah a bit of atmosphere you know thinking about what it must have been like to be to be on 
on, on, on in that in that moment on the ship you know it's interesting it that it, it yeah it's really interesting that you you mentioned that yeah that you write the lyrics first because it's fascinating I, i've found that the majority of interviews that i i have done over the last several years most musicians um yeah it's it's riff driven and then the lyrics come but it and I'm not a musician, but it makes more sense to me that you would come up with the lyrics first and then write the music around that because that's, you know, what can be yeah, you're going to convey that emotion of what the, the song's about. Exactly. And, and, I, and I feel like I, I try to, I guess it's, it's perhaps a slightly, you know, I don't think of myself as a classical musician, but, if, you know, when we, when I was being, played classical music as, as a kid at school and uh you know the the i mean i remember they played a piece of music called it was based on scott of the there was a the theme music from scott the film scott of the antarctic mm. and and we were asked to write down on pieces of paper what emotions the sounds of that piece of music made us feel interesting and i didn't know the piece of music at the time and i wrote down something i think i wrote down something the sound of the wind blowing in in an egyptian desert oh. and of course it wasn't an egyptian desert it was the uh, it was the the antarctic you know and and what happened was the music teacher in, in it came in assembly and read out the ones that he felt read out the the comments of the people that that he felt had picked up on something in the music. And I remember being intensely embarrassed because one of them was mine. Oh, wow. But, but, it, but it shows that I was already listening for more in the music than, than you know, I guess when some people listen to music, they just hear it as a collection of sounds. Yeah. But I, I always listen more deeply. I mean, I don't know about you, but, I can be moved by music to tears or oh definitely definitely you know to tears I know there are some songs I struggle to play I mm. remember and here's an interesting one because we have been compared to Blue Oyster Cult a couple of times oh yes in reviews I I was at, at an open mic night and as you know I don't know if you know but my, my father died died very suddenly in 1982 not long after the trespasses uh he was only he was 47 i mean he obviously we weren't expecting it yeah that's but I, I remember that i i was i played um don't fear the reaper oh wow an open mic night and i actually completely broke down and blubbed because there are some lyrics in don't fear the reaper that are i find really moving you know yeah and, and I get, and I guess I approach my music in that way. I want it. I want everything about it, the sound of it, to convey the whole thing as a as a as a complete package. And and I and I I, I, I don't know. If sometimes that always works that well for me. But but I but I want it. You know, that, that's that's what that's just one of the ways I approach my music. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's interesting. The yeah i'm the same way I, I i'm uh music is very emotional for me um and yeah and it, it brings back memories it, it brings back different times that you know uh, just you know feelings and things and I'm, i've always been fascinated by uh it may be in a horrifying way people that are you know i, I remember talking to somebody once and i don't remember where then they told me you know i think i just asked you know because i love music so much i had asked somebody maybe in a bar or somewhere uh, just said, oh, what kind of music do you listen to? And like, and they said, I don't really listen to music. I'm like, I know, I don't right. like music even. Yeah, yeah, I don't like, really like music, or it's just something in the background. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't say it out loud, but in my head, I was thinking, this person's a fucking sociopath. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, isn't it? And I, uh, and like, obviously, as a musician or somebody that loves music, as soon as a piece of music comes on the radio, even if it's a, a, a genre I don't like. Or, or not, I, don't like, I like all the music, but there are some genres I think, well, this is not for me, really. Um, I start, I start really analyzing it and listening to it and look, listening to the, the drums, or I break it down. And it, I guess it's a curse of music, musicians. Yeah. But they can't listen to something the way that perhaps a fan might listen to it. Mm. You don't listen to it that way, you hear it differently, you know. 
but uh, no, I I I, I love I, I love soundscape. I, I guess is the best way I can describe. Rush Rush did it well, didn't they? No, oh, yeah. Rush did it well. Things like Xanadu and stuff like that. That kind of soundscape soundscape setting and the story. I I, I really like that. I, I love Farewell to Kings and and the Twenty One Twelve and all that kind of stuff. Where oh yes, the guys a bit of freedom. And obviously they they struggled to get their concept across didn't they to start with and i and, and i guess I, I i i would like to be able to I, and i don't know if i'll get the chance to do another album i hope so with trespass but i i think i i would like to develop that side of the band a little further the storytelling side the something oh. I, I can see a one side piece of music coming on <laughs> very cool which I do. I'd love to do, you know. I would love to hear I mean, that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have said that they'd like to hear that. So that maybe I'll get a chance to do it. I, 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 I there, there's, I mean, I love science fiction, fan, fantasy, I love Lord of the Rings, all that, all that kind of stuff. Where there's a, you know, there's a, there's opportunities for imagery and, but also, you know, stuff relative to the modern world, the, the environment, nature. Yeah. You know. Uh, maybe i think too much <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, that sounds amazing i I love that um i was curious to kind of uh, circle back a little bit you know we were talking about the kind of the early days of the band um you know with with your brother and and with yeah. richard and, and dave and um i was curious about the um I, I i found it interesting it seemed like and maybe i'm wrong because i'm looking at this you know hindsight but it seemed like you guys broke up, you know, you broke up in 82 and I know it was kind of uh, everybody, I think at the, well, I've read this before in a magazine or yeah. some, some interview that everybody kind of felt like their, their day jobs were more viable at the time, but yeah. it felt like you guys were at the point of breaking through into, you know, a bigger thing when you broke up, maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I, especially because, you know, the, that style of music was exploding at that time, at, at oh, least, think, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, 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 that's true, Victor. I, uh, that's, that's, obviously, Dad's death kind of came down like a bit of a guillotine, and just. Mm. I, I, but I, but I guess that for me personally, the trespass thing w was was. Our, our naivety, our greenness as a band, and as people, as human beings, um, was part of the problem, really, because we there was no doubt that the creativity was there. I can hear it myself when, when I work out. Sometimes we'll work out an old song that we're thinking of putting in the set, mm. and I think to myself, you know, actually, some of this stuff's pretty good for young kids. Kids, really, you know, great, yeah. And, and I'll and I'll sort of think, yeah, yeah, I can see what we were trying to do, and like, and and, and but what happened was we had this sort of set of songs, and we started to, to to develop as a band, and then the industry got hold of us to an extent, and said, no, 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 you you've got to have this, you've got to have a, this kind of front man, you've got to have a you've got to have a front man. Mm. Because I was, I was, I, I, I still am quite a shy person, and I, and I, my vocals have never been the strongest suit of my way of approaching music. But I, but I, it's a little bit like wanting to live or die on your hill, a little bit. Right. And I, and I, and I as soon as we were kind of manipulated a little bit by the industry in into the form that they wanted us to be it started to lose its momentum a little bit for me and and we got a singer in and then the record companies that came to see us didn't like him and we got rid of him and got someone else and uh, and in between i was I, I i just desperately wanted to get back to that original formula because i believed in that yeah it sounds a bit of an ego trip but, but I, honestly it was and it wasn't even that the singers weren't great guys or anything like that it's just that i i really wanted it to, to I, I would rather have had the opportunity for the trespass that i believed in 
to, to, to fight or fall with that early stuff on an album than go through all that manipulation. And, and what happened was I started to lose my direction and what I, of what I really wanted to do. Mm. And it got watered down a little bit. And at a time like we experienced in the new wave of British heavy metal, if you didn't grab onto the motorcycle as it rode past, you, you or, or, or the ship sailed, depending on what you you want to use. I, I think we we just we just slightly missed the boat. We were we were younger than most of the other bands that that, that managed to make it. Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, Saxon. We were a couple of years younger than them. And I just I just feel like we just didn't quite. And the biggest thing for me is if if when we went in the studio to record one of these days, we'd actually recorded an album there there and then, I think that would have been that would have made the difference. Yeah. And the album would have then risen or fallen, but it would have been music that I believed in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah, I was curious about the. Yeah, because it seemed like. Yeah. Unfortunately, it seemed like yeah, you guys kind of missed the boat on you know and I, it's such a great yeah, band and such a great sound to an extent although we big things happened and we signed to, ma to a massive booking agent yeah and there were some really big people into interested in it one of them was don arden uh, um oh wow ozzy osborne's wife's father he was interested in the band at one time and it was a little bit subtle because we didn't even really know it was happening hmm. but it makes sense now because he was managing a guy a band called girl at the time Oh yeah, that had, that had Phil Collin in in the band on guitar and uh, Phil Lewis on vocals. He went on to LA Guns, and we suddenly got these three nights at the Marquee Club supporting Girl, and of course that was the connection. He was he, he was he was taking quite a bit of interest in us at the time, um, and we didn't really know what was going on. You know, wow. uh, I, I mean, obviously he was he got a bit of a reputation for being. Uh, one of the hard men of heavy rap or so i don't know if it would have been a good idea if we had but but there were there were the industry were definitely taking an interest in trespass back then yeah but for one reason or another it just it just didn't it didn't connect but i really really wish that we we were we were that the, the, the independent record label we we were signed to and that probably was a mistake with hindsight to sign at that at that, at that stage it was very singles, single orientated, and that had come out of the punk era, where uh, these small yeah. labels, they basically put out a single, and it was a little bit like fishing. They put the single out, they'd get major labels interested, and they'd get a licensing deal. And that's what they were trying to do with us. So they didn't, they actually discouraged the recording of an album. Really? Wow. <laughs> because they were waiting for a major record company to pay for it. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the kind of thing that went on. And, of course, we were too naive to know any different. Did you have, right. um, did you have a sense of um, kind of that you were part of something bigger at that time? Did You know, what, what was England like at, you know, at, being an American, I wasn't there, obviously. And it's, uh, and again, a lot of it's kind of hindsight for me. Like, you know, I, I knew about, about the movement but at the, it was really hard to get the music here at that time um or a lot of it um but it feels like it was such an exciting uh, just kind of this electric time um with those bands and and playing those clubs and yeah i think it was i i i i i feel as though a new wave of british heavy metal could maybe it had to happen then I mean, there were some good young bands coming up in Brit in 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 in, 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 in the states, in Canada, here, every uh, you know, all, all over. These bands are there, um, I, but I wonder if really the new wave of British heavy metal was like it was the next generation of the people that had been inspired by, let's face it, some of the greatest bands of all time: Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, you know, Judas Priest. And, and all that melting pot had come together. And, and because there was a, you could draw a, a straight line through those earlier bands. And obviously when we recorded one of these days in 79, Purple had split by then. Yeah. But Rainbow were, you know, 
obviously Rainbow, but they, 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 they'd been through the Dio, Dio era, era and were moving on into something different. Most of my childhood time, I didn't, I didn't, I want, I didn't want to, I didn't, I don't say I didn't like Down to Earth, but I loved the Dio stuff and I, I wanted that to continue, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's sort of where we were. And, and what, weirdly, what happened was, I think the new wave of British heavy metal actually raised the profile of the older bands as well. Oh, I and brought, yeah. brought them back into in, 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 in a focus. Um, I, I guess the industry, I don't know how the, the, the rock in, in, industry... Oh, oh, yeah, still there? Yes. Okay, yes. so... Uh, the, 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 the heavy rock is look how long some of these bands have lasted yeah you know ozzy is, is talking about going on stage in a wheelchair i mean no, no doubt with back wings and stuff like that but i mean it, it won't die the industry don't want that they want a quick turnover or they did they had done yeah and and and, and i guess what happened was the the press started to look around and they suddenly realised, wow, there's all these bands out there, and and I think that it, it was a little bit created by certainly Sounds magazine, Jeff Barton at Sounds. He started to go, and they started to go out and look around the, the little clubs, and they thought, wow, look at all these bands, you know, yeah. that have come through the second generation, and. Um, uh, it just it just it, it just blossomed from there for me the new wave of british heavy metal probably had was over by 82 i think there were a lot of bands post that who who, who attached themselves onto it but for me once it had created that its main acts if you like that that, that was it so right def leppard iron maiden um, Saxon, uh, uh, um, and, and a couple of others. I mean, you know, th th there were some great bands around, and then a little bit later on, there were some other things going on. But yeah, I, I guess I, I, I think I can, I, I can say with confidence that Trespass were an absolute bona fide new wave of British heavy metal band, although Definitely. we were slightly, slightly late to the party. <laughs> Well, and you had a what one of the things I I love and respect about the band too is you guys had a and and nothing against any of that. I love I'm a I die hard new wave of British heavy metal fan. I love the music, and but one thing I really liked about Trespass was um, and kind of similar like with Praying Mantis is you guys were a little more melodic um, than yeah. some of the other bands, which uh, and and not you know not that that's good or bad either way. I just but it was unique, which I liked. Um, and uh yeah i mean some of my uh you know some of my favorite songs of that era are trespass songs like assassin i love that song so much it's such a great yeah. song you just put um, it back in the set actually oh cool oh great yeah well, what, happened, what happened was uh, we, uh, I, we were sort of going through the older stuff and i at a rehearsal and i said well how, i started playing it and the guy the newer guys on in the band obviously none of them, uh, they really picked up on it so it's back in the set because oh. They loved it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, hey. yeah, it's that's great. great. That's great news. That's a great song. I love that song. Um, so I, I was curious about the um. So you know the band broke up in eighty two, um, yeah. and I know you uh, later you were in a a band called Blue Blood in uh, kind of the late eighties. Um, yeah. Then Blue uh, Blood, really, Blue Blood was Trespass to start okay. with. Okay, because it was Paul too, right? Yeah, we reformed in '86 as Trespass. Mm. Oh, okay. And, uh, and 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 recorded a demo, which we is only ever been on cassette. I, I I I I'm sure there's a copy out there somewhere. I think we did four songs, um, and you can already hear a, a bit more, a slightly more modern sound, but it's still Trespass. And then we kind of we kind of started to develop a slightly more american kind of van halen-y sort of high energy sort of sound and somehow my paul it was paul 
managed to convince me that we should change the name. I think maybe he felt like it was holding us back. I mean, hmm. and I suppose to, 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 to our credit, we took another band with another name and took it to, 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 to a record deal, you know, and, and went back to the marquee club and did it all, you know, with, with blue blood. But it was, and then, and then it kind of, it just got out of hand and I don't know. I was under a bit of pressure at, at home to, to bring in the goods. Yeah, and so. I, I, think we, I think it just went a bit, it went a bit Bon Jovi, you know, <laughs> a bit Bon Jovi, <laughs> a bit Guns N' Roses and it, it lost its, yeah. I'm proud of some of the songs from a purely songwriting point of view for a certain genre, but it isn't really me, no. Gotcha. gotcha. And then, so I guess 92, you kind of transitioned back into Trespass. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, you guys released Head in 93. I I think it was yeah, 93. Right. I had to get that, that heavier, darker stuff out of my system a little bit. There's some good stuff on Head. I mean, I never really liked the sound of it, but, but the of the album but there, but there's some, there's some good stuff on there yeah i was a bit i was i was being a bit influenced by the more modern sound um which you know uh, especially alice in chains which i i really liked i, I don't know I, 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 don't, I don't know why there was something about their music that i i could hear a little bit of trespassing i think hmm. um or something that, that, that i picked up on i don't know i don't know what it was but i I mean, I, I like Cantrell's guitar playing and I like your songwriting, you know. Yeah. And, and um, so I picked up on that and obviously Metallica as well. There's a bit of Metallica in there. There's some good stuff on there. I, I, I like to bring some of that stuff back, probably modernise the sound slightly. But but yeah, so, so I... And then I guess we... Then, then I, I, I wanted to do another album... A little bit later on, we, we sort of, I don't know, we got, I went through a, a, a bit of a bad breakup and piecing things back together. And then I got to the stage where I thought, right, it's, it, it's time for me to do another Trespass album. And, and out of that came the re-recording of some of the old stuff on the, in 2015. Oh, okay. Um, but that was all I could convince the other original members to do. They wouldn't work on anything new. Interesting. I, I don't know why. Um, I, I guess they they knew where it might lead. Because I, once I start down that road, maybe they knew they couldn't support me in it. I guess because I've been through a breakup and I, I was single at the time, I, I felt like I had the freedom to do what I wanted yeah and and they knew it was going to if they got on that horse with me they knew it was going to interfere in their lives something terrible so i think they tried to sort of rein it in yeah a you, were, you were ready to rock and they're like well <laughs> i've got <laughs> i was ready to rock and uh, and obviously you know paul is the drummer of choice um but i guess the other guys weren't as ready to rock as i was and uh, gradually they 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 kind of f fell away from it, and I thought to myself, by then I'd written some of the stuff for the um, for Footprints in the Rock, hmm. and the momentum, if you don't mind the pun, was such that I just I just had to do it. So I just brought in other guys. I found some other guys, and I was really lucky to find the guys that I did because you know. Uh, it, it wasn't the same because different people have different personalities it comes through in their playing yeah but this current lineup um the, the, the recorded the album it, it is really working for me again yeah very tight uh, very tight band yeah. the guys are pas passionate about the music they and they don't mind this again you know where the other when you work with people for a long time you do get a little bit of unconscious preempting of what you're going to do and and things like that whereas and, and also again coming back to what i said about i was ready to rock there's a bit of a monster in there i'm afraid when i'm ready to rock 
and people find it a little difficult sometimes. I, I, can, I can understand it looking back on it now. And that, 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 that monster has to be tamed to an extent. Mm. And, and, and one of the ways I, I felt like sometimes the guys tried to tame me was if I wrote something and, you know, that I really thought I thought was good or I felt was good, there was a tendency to put a bit of a lid on it. But I don't get that with these guys. If I write something good, they go, wow, Mark, that's really good. Nice. And of course, we all enjoy that a bit of praise, but it helps me. That little bit of affirmation helps me to push that song a little harder um, or maybe look at it again in a, in a different way. So, I, I, and, and it's weird. And I, and I really noticed it because I realized that I didn't get that praise from hmm. some of the other guys that I've worked with. And, it, I, I, and I can only think it was just a way of like controlling me a little bit. Yeah. It sounds negative, but I don't mean it like that, but there's a kind of a, don't let Mark get too excited about it because you know where that will lead, you know? And um, I don't know if they were trying to protect me a little bit or, you know, cause I can, I can, this means a lot to me, what I do. And, and I don't mind telling you that I have sacrificed a lot on the altar of trespass or my own, or, or that music. Uh, and uh -huh. I guess a lot of guys, you know, have done that and it has cost me i don't i don't mind admitting it you know because i guess there's a thing with art of any kind is is a piece of art that you really believe in the value of it isn't necessarily in the dollars that someone's prepared to pay for it right it, you've made that piece of art and the value of it to you remains whether somebody buys it or not and, and there's a bit of confusion between is something only worth something because somebody says it is or is it worth something to you as an artist? And I guess that, that artistic temperament, that side of me, is what some people have found a bit difficult in the past. Yeah. That's I, a really I, good I'm point. Much more, I'm much more comfortable with it now. And, and I guess I'm, I'm able to be more myself but I realize that even now with the guys I'm working with now, they know that there's a dangerous animal in there somewhere. <laughs> you can see it on the front of the album. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a, that's a really fascinating point. And, and I think an important point is um, that the difference between, you know, like any sort of the arts uh, as opposed to other fields um, where it is a business obviously you know you're making yeah. money, but also there's that emotional big emotional piece of that you know and that legacy um you know as opposed to you know say like you know with my job you know like i create a spreadsheet you know i'm not going to give a shit about that you know next week <laughs> whereas you've written a piece of music and that will live with you forever i mean that's yeah. you know that, that's, yeah 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 um, uh, it's a little bit, I, I, I try to think, I, again, this sounds like, I'm not being disparaging here, but I, I've got some good friends that are artists and they're really good artists and they make their living painting pictures of people's pets. Hmm. And that's fantastic. But, but And it is art of a sort, but none of those pictures are going to tell me anything about those people. Right, yeah. And of course the other one, one of my big bugbears is the tribute band, mm. which especially when you, you're trying to get work as an original band and you can't get into the venue because the venue will only have tribute bands because they put bums on seats. Yeah. And I find that really frustrating. There should be a law that if you have a certain number of tribute bands, you should be taxed in such a way that there's money to put on a gig with an original act. My point being that unless you encourage original music, eventually there'll be nobody to tribute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a really great point. That's an yeah. excellent point. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, you know, tribute bands, I, I've done it myself. I, I attempted it myself. And I just, 
for the effort involved in be to be a, a tribute band that really earns money is just as great in all the areas that are a grind as it is for a for a real band. The traveling, yeah, the hotels, the the the, the, the rehearsing, the blah 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 blah, the time, all the rest of it. You know, and and Joe, the, the guitarist, uh, the other guitarist in Traspo, he was a very talented young guy. He's actually the sound engineer and stage manager at a theater, small theater. Oh, cool. And, and they, 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 get, they get a lot of tribute acts. And he said, you won't believe the number of tribute acts who actually they half believe that they are the person they're tributing and they act that way accordingly. Yeah, it's signing uh, autographs and swanning around, you know, kind of, there's something slightly bizarre when it goes beyond the music itself, yeah. which of course we all love, you know, we all love the music. Yeah, and yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a weird phenomenon, and it seems to be, I mean, I, it, you know, there's always been cover bands, and but yeah, these tribute bands that have become really big, and, and not to disparage the musicians in any way, but I do not understand and i'm so let me back I'll, I'll backtrack a little i'm a massive pink floyd fan i have no understanding of you know like brit pink floyd or australian pink floyd that just seems ridiculous to me that people would pay hundreds of dollars to see a band pretending to be another band i think that's <laughs> no, it's totally, i mean in a way it does show where the true power is and mm. it's in the songs True. The songs. That's true. It isn't necessarily even in the in the individuals who wrote the songs in the first place. The actual music itself has a life of its own, and I guess if it's played really well, but but it, it, even in a, in a straightforward covers band, you can bring something of yourself. Yeah. But when people are dressing up as somebody else, right, it starts as well and be, and talking like them and doing their stage moves and so it gets too much for me i don't i don't want that i'm not interested in that. yeah it's like a vegas it becomes a, a caricature this vegas show it's yeah it's not reality it's it's very bizarre um i mean there's a there's a few bands where somebody was so good at tributing that they ended up in the actual band that's you true know, that's you, true you know, that occasionally you know the bands have been out to find a singer you know uh, 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 because of the, because they 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 tributed them you know so right i guess there's something in there but but no but but yeah i i i it's that side of it that artistic side that creative side that is me that that, that that's very important to me and uh, and that and that's 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 where I, I'm, I'm coming from now with this tres with this particular lineup of trespass and what i hope to do in the future I mean, obviously, it's down to the the record's got to do well for us to do another record. Um, but, but I'm hoping that we will. Yeah, well, I'm going to promote the hell out of it because I think it's phenomenal. So, I think it's a fantastic really album. Yeah, great did album. Did you know one of my middle names is Victor? Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, that's my, grand, my The tradition in our family was for to have your 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 name, your new name, Mark. Your father's name, in this case, it's Alan, and your grandfather's name on a paternal grandfather, and that's Victor. Oh, right on! Nice. So, yeah. Cheers yeah, to that. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheers to Victor. Yeah, he was a he he was a a soldier. He he fought all through World War Two. Oh wow! Yeah. I never got to meet him. He died before I was born, but it, quite young. But but um, but he was uh, he was he was quite a, a soldier. Yeah, a military man. Nice. Um. Uh, I wanted to circle back to something you you said a little bit ago about art and and artists and yeah. particularly with with the album cover. Um, yeah, you of course uh, employed the amazing artwork of uh, Mark Wilkinson, who uh, is of course famous for his work with you know Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Yeah. Stuff. Um, yeah. So I was curious did 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 he come up with the concept? Did you uh, you know like say here's what I want or yeah. It's a really nice story, this, because basically what happened was um, 
we I live in a little village in in in, in East Anglia in Suffolk in East Anglia in in, in England and um uh it, it, there was a fantastic pub here called the King's Head and it it it, it was a place I when I, I never used to live in the village I lived in the town a few miles away and I used to come to this pub on a Wednesday evening if I was around to do their open play their open mic, mic night. And it was a brilliant little pub, really fantastic. They brewed their own beer. It was just great. Oh, uh, great. And um, really eclectic people. It's just a nice mix of all sorts of different people. And and, 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 and tragically, the, the, the landlord and landlady split. And they unbelievably, tragically sold the pub. And I thought, oh, my God, what's going to oh. happen? You know, and I, I was absolutely gutted. And... Um, I was just trying to find something to show you actually but i don't know where it is but but anyway eventually the pub was bought and it changed hands and it didn't open yet and suddenly this fantastic new sign for the king's head appeared which was a picture of a saxon a warrior um a saxon chieftain uh, who's supposed to have founded the village his name was built and it's Builders, Builderston is the name of the village. Hmm. And, and, I, and I looked at it, I thought, that's got album cover written all over it. And of course, unbeknownst to me at the time, it was Mark's work. Oh, okay. he, he was friends with the couple that had bought the pub. Oh, wow. So I went into the pub when it opened and got friendly with the landlord and landlady, who were young people in their late 30s, early 40s. And I said, who did your sign? It's so fantastic. I said, it makes me think of album covers. And she said, funny you should say that because <laughs> a guy called Mark Wilkinson, would you like his email? And I thought, yes, please. So anyway, I emailed Mark Wilkinson, not expecting, because he, he, he lives locally, not to, expecting to get a reply. Because often when you email people in the industry, they don't bother to reply, you know. Right. Then he replied straight away. And he said, I've heard of Trespass, he said. And I mentioned it to some of the guys at Iron Maiden who'd also heard of Trespass, so that was nice. Uh, and he said, yeah, he said, let's have a look at it. He said, I, I, obviously, I'll, I'll do your mate's rates and all that sort of thing, and uh, I'd like to have a look. And he, he did a few quick sketches, and, and, and he went through the tracks. I gave him the album to listen to, a, quite, a really early mix of the album unmixed in fact just to give him an idea of the songs and i think we were we were toying with different potential title tracks at the time but he picked up on wolf at the door mm. he said wolf at the door he said i like the sound of that and he said obviously people are feeling that a little bit now yeah the world you know teetering a little bit and so although wolf at the door itself is about perhaps being trapped in a situation that you know is wrong but carrying on playing the game and the wolf at the door is your freedom calling you from outside. That was the concept for the song. But also, of course, the wolf in the, in the album cover is also nature crying out. And that ties in with some of the other tracks on the album, like force of nature and, and, uh, and uh, back to the woods and things like that. So it kind of came round in this overall com concept you know and mark did such a fantastic job i know he he he, he really likes what he did yeah it's beautiful and, album cover you know and he and, and and i and i i said to him look i know that, i know this is a bit of a cliche but i said rainbow rising you know the fist coming out of the sea and the, and the castle and the rocks and the and the just the, the um, but mark's got this palette that he uses they're his colors that I, I just loved it. I thought, wow, this is really good. And of course, thinking back to my youth, you know, an album cover could make you pick an album up oh, out of the rack. Right. Yeah. And, and we'd never had a cover like that, really. So, yeah, I think it's, again, I think it's another thing about the album. It's, help, yeah. it's helped to, to, to you know, lift everything at a, le a, a level. Yeah, fantastic album cover. Yeah, for fantastic music. Yeah, to, to meet Mark in some little tiny pub and 
he's drawn on the back of a fag packet, you know. Uh, that's so cool. And, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, it's, it's just just amazing. That's amazing. really he, cool. He's a really really nice guy, and um, and uh, I'm hoping to work with him again. Actually. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. On, that, something, uh... on, on something. It, it, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I want to do. Uh, 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 a new compilation a new Christmas compilation I want it to be a double album on vinyl and my working title is Children of the Storm at the moment Ooh. so I can see Mark <laughs> he doesn't know about it yet <laughs> but anyway this sounds yeah, good but, this but, is... yeah yeah so I've, I'm, 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 I'm kind of hoping that might come off I, I don't know how it's going how it's going to happen yet but so it'll be so it'll be kind of an anthology then, uh, an, an, an anthology, but very much my own anthology, something that I, the way I see it. Okay. Um, uh, and and possibly a couple of new things. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. I like it. I like it a <laughs> lot. That sounds fantastic. That's exciting news. Um, uh, before I let you go, uh, I and I don't want to keep you all night, but I, do you have any? Do you guys have any shows coming up? Any any announcements at this point? Uh, our next big show is Headbangers Open Air in uh, near Hamburg in Germany. Oh, cool! Um, which we've played a couple of times before, but I am really looking forward to this one. We the guys, we all get on so well. It's fun to play. We've, we're, we've got 60 minute slots so we, we, we can although it, obviously it's not as long as it could be we can include a couple of things off the new album that perhaps we would have to leave out otherwise and yeah I'm really looking forward to it it's Excellent. a great crowd it's just got a great atmosphere and um, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to that show and, and the album has done quite well in, in Germany got, you've got really great reviews in most of their major magazines Nice. And uh, I, I'm hoping, yeah, that, that, that it's going to be a good one for us. Excellent. I mean, I'd I'd like to do. Uh, whenever we get a chance to play with a with a well known act, Trespass always seems to go down quite well with an audience in in, in the heavy rock area. You know, um, we were lucky enough to do a few shows with the Sweet. Oh, cool. You know, which, was a, 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 a band from my youth where I was really introduced to heavy rock with some of their songs like Action and Sweet FA and stuff like that. There's some there's some real good heavy rock stuff in 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 behind the Sweet singles. Yeah, definitely. And, and I and I was it was a great honour to play with them, but their audience loved us. Nice. And, uh, and we sold loads of loads sold loads of merch and CDs to and I. I, I would really like to do a, 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 a tour with a with a with a band that can pull an audience that we can. I mean, everybody would say that, but I just feel like our music, you know, deserves. I feel like it deserves a, a, a bigger audience, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard for bands to get shows, you know. Yeah. Do you think you'll? I, and I know it's expensive, and it's become even more expensive and more difficult. Do you think you'd ever get to the states? I'd absolutely love to. I'd really love to. I I, I just don't know. I mean, it's, you, you could never say never, but but I, I, I doubt it from an expense point of view. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, but you just you just don't know, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, my, my, my friends James and, and Lars from Metallica might say, come over and play. A, you know, you never know. Yeah. Well, I, hope, one. I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Um, uh, for for those watching, uh, please look in the description below. There are links to Trespass, uh, Trespass's page. And uh, if you have any trust in me at all in my musical taste, then you need to buy this album right now. Uh, it is fantastic. Definitely one of my top five for 2003. I love it. Um, it's a fantastic album. Mark, this has been uh, an absolute pleasure and an honor, truly, chatting with you today. Uh, thank right. you and, so and much. Me, me. I wish we could talk more, and maybe we will. 
Yeah, yeah, this was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to once the uh, once the anthology album. Once you get that going, and and if you end up doing this concept album, yeah, we definitely have to do a follow up interview. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sounds I, fascinating. I, I, I've got some ideas, but I, I don't know if it will happen. But but um, but I, I started to do something. There's a, there's a track called Beowulf and Grendel on um, Footprints in the Rock. That was originally a much bigger piece, which covered the whole kind of Beowulf saga. Oh yeah, and it ended up being Hammett coming down just just to that heavy, heavy, heavier sort of riff. But there was there was a load of acoustic stuff beforehand, you know. So I I, I don't know. I've, I've got some ideas. Cool. I love it. I love that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Thank you again so much. This has been awesome. Thank you, Victor. Thanks very much. Nice to talk to you. Yes. I've got a good